Hi, this is Wicca and Witchcraft 101. I am High Priestess Tehila Firewind from the Coven of Open Mind. Um, this is our third lecture. The topic here is chakra alignment and bubble casting, which is a very basic form of evocation magic. Um, this is going to be kind of our segue from talking about the overview and the basics into actually practicing evocation magic. Um, so let's get started. Actually, before we start on the actual material, I want to make a comment. So there are a lot of people out there who have um, this opinion that if something belongs to a certain culture, you shouldn't talk about it or make use of it in your personal practices. And they, it's, it's something that they call appropriation. It's, appropriation is technically defined as profiting off of a minority culture um, as, a, as a member of a majority culture. So like, you know, taking advantage of a minority culture um, just to make money would be an example of appropriating. Um, so they have kind of extended, and, and by they I mean the generic masses of the internet, <laughs> have kind of extended this to mean that if you're even um, talking about or, or learning about or practicing um, certain types of magic, that that's something that shouldn't be allowed. And, and when you take this to the extreme, it's, it's a little crazy because you wind up with um, groups of people who won't even let the minorities talk about their own practices, things like voodoo, um, because the, the terms that are associated with it, um, you know, the members of the group who are white basically are not allowed to say these words. And so they say nobody can say them. It's only fair to, to everyone if no one can talk about it. And then you just, you have people coming in who are like, well, am I not welcome here because I practice voodoo and I'm black and my heritage is, you know. So you, you, you run into these crazy extreme situations uh, when you follow the line of reasoning through to the end. And I just think that, you know, that's a little nuts. I, I mean, if you're just learning about something so that you can incorporate it into your personal practice, what is so bad about that? That doesn't make any sense to me. That is something called cultural evolution. That's something that occurs naturally. That's happened for thousands of years. I mean, this is why the Greek and Roman myths are so similar. This is why we have holidays like Christmas. Because cultures came along and said, well, we want you to believe in this. And we see that you believe in that already, so why don't we compromise and make our holiday a celebration of your traditions? But also, it's about this now, too. And that's great, right? That, that kind of cultural evolution is what brings us all together. It's what allows us as witches to also wish people Merry Christmas. Because it's all the same. It's Yule, okay? It's the celebration of the winter solstice, and it all takes various forms and it's just fun. So we don't, as pagans, get mad about the way that people in pop culture celebrate Halloween or Christmas or Easter or whatever, holidays that were traditionally pagan. Um, because we just like, you know, that's, that's the whole point of our religion is, is when you have all these things coming together and giving you a, a better perspective of what is really happening in the universe that helps you to be a better person that helps you grow so it's important to be exposed to uh, many different ways of thinking about the same things and these are really fundamentally the same things so um, chakra alignment and this is the thing that gets me about chakras there are many different systems of chakras in many different um, religions that span many different ethnicities and, and, and races so it's, it's completely silly to think that, I mean, they don't even come from the same language trees. Like you have Buddhism uh, and, and you, have, um, you have different kinds of Hinduism and both of these, and, and you have people in China using what are basically chakras. And there's many different names for chakra. There's many different literal words in the different language trees that sound similar, despite the fact that they're in different languages. And they mean the same thing. And there's a different number of chakras and different systems of them. Like, there's 
we're going to talk about the main seven, okay? We're going to talk about the most commonly known, most commonly used ones. But there are systems that have 50 chakras. And like, is that not, is, there's so much variety of chakra magic. It's like, what is the point of saying, no, we're not allowed to talk about it, we're not allowed to learn about it because it's sacred to these, this one group of people. It's, you know, it's, so don't worry about cultural appropriation here in this coven on this YouTube page. You can leave comments if you don't agree. I don't care. I'll talk to you. We'll, we'll chat. Um, but my whole stance on everything is um, that, you know, you should learn as much as you can and you should absorb as much as you can from many different cultures. And when you can do that um, and, and you can understand it, you know, you have to, but you have to really learn about it, right? Like nobody's sitting here saying, you know, that it's okay to mock other cultures or, or demean practices um, by, by learning like at the high level and then kind of bastardizing the rituals. I mean, so, so for example, you'll see like if you look on our website for the full moon ritual to tote that I wrote a short while back, um, I didn't just like, you know, say his name and get some feathers and, and that's that, right? So I actually read the Book of the Dead with Cody because he was interested in this. And um, we read the transliteration and we took lines of the Book of the Dead and used them to write the invocation. And everything was very particular and precise, which is the kind of God that Tote is. And you have to make it authentic. If it's not an authentic ritual, it's not going to work. That's the essence of magic, is authenticity, genuineness, and helping yourself become more authentic and more genuine and true to yourself. So it's really important that, you know, you don't just take the words out of these cultures and change them to mean whatever you want. Okay, that is right. That I agree with the other camp on that fact. But at the same time, I just think it's the way to go about that is not to just never talk about it. That's, of course not. You have to just be careful that you are being authentic, that you're taking the time to research what you're doing, um, and that you're being respectful. You know, and that's something we don't really have a problem with in our coven because it's right there in our creed. So, but I wanted to comment on that first because a lot of people have brought up appropriation recently. And, you know, the official stance in our group is, you know, don't be a dick, right? Like, be respectful at all times. But if you want to learn about some culture, or some Native American myths vibe with you, and you want to work with some Native American deities, even if you're like maybe kind of an, an 18th maybe Native American, not even, it doesn't matter, okay? Just practice it. Learn about it. Learn about it. Take time to research it. Write a blog post, you know? Whatever you want to do. Because it's important that you explore all the aspects of yourself and learning about different ways of thinking and, and different perspectives in the world will help you do that. Okay. So on to the actual course material. We have chakra alignment and um, bubble casting. Here we go. So for starters, what is a chakra? Okay. Uh, chakra is, in Sanskrit, it means wheel or disc. There are many similar words in a lot of different languages. Um, so they all basically mean some kind of like uh, rotation is what they're referring to. Um, the way that they think about it is that it's like a rotating center, uh, like a whirlpool, and um, they all f flow into each other. And if you have a blockage in between some of the pools, then um, that causes issues. And the, and the pool down beneath that one would not have enough energy to do whatever it needs to, to do. Um, so you know, their, their physical and emotional um, centers of the body um, that are, that exist on the divine plane. So it's like the channel between higher planar energy and our planar energy. Uh, and the different um, parts of the body uh, have different alignments and can be used differently for different things. And that makes sense, right? Because so you use your hands to do things. So your hands are action. Um, so if you are trying to stop yourself from doing something, um, then the energy coming from your hands is not going to help. So this is why people might sit on their hands if they're like trying to sit still or not call someone or something like that, like try not to call your ex, like just sit on your hands because your hands are where that energy um, comes from. So like, even though you could just sit there and not do it, and you could just sit there and have the willpower to not do it, it's easier for you to sit there and not do it if you sit on your hands. 
right? So this is how chakra magic works. And this is why you can understand now, like chakra magic is an intuitive thing. You know, these cultures, they came up with the system for a reason. This stuff works. You know, it's, it's a good way of thinking about it. So why not use it to better yourself? You know, that is a way of respecting the culture. So um, if you want to talk about, though, like, so what is a chakra? Okay, so we're saying, like, there's these metaphysical centers. What does that mean? We don't really know what a chakra is physically, like, in science. Um, they have done science to show that, you know, you can see, um, you, you can uh, feel an, an increase in energy coming off a person when chakras are aligned. Um, they, they, people who are studying metaphysics specifically, um, have, have, people are, who are looking for these chakras have said, you know, that they would be parts of the central and peripheral nervous system. So that's like a network of neurons that ha they work by, um, developing an electric gradient like lightning, you know, and then it has to release at some point. And when it does that, it's said to fire. Um, and then it fires an electron. And that gets received, and certain neurotransmitters get sent out. And the neurotransmitters that get sent out go into the other cell, and they are what build the charge and fire the next electron. So it's a really complicated process of chemicals and electric signals. And because um, these things are really small, there's a possibility that they can be impacted by um, you know, quantum processes, things that don't affect macroscopic systems. And it would be like small, really tiny stuff, and none of this is happening in a vacuum. So it's not things that would be easy to calculate if the effect existed at all. Um, so this is kind of like where science leaves us off. Like we can't, at, at present moment, we can't really know if this is accurate or not scientifically because we don't have the instruments required to measure this, the energy at this level. Um, but this is what they would, this is what they would theorize. Uh, or hypothesize is the correct scientific term. Um, and it is falsifiable. You could disprove this, um, which, which means that it is, it's a valid, you know, scientific hypothesis. Um, it's just that we don't really have the technology to disprove it. So a lot of scientific theories start like that. Um, they just are predicted by math and then we develop the experiments to prove them. And then they sometimes become laws, um, things that you observe to be true, uh, that explain theories. That's what a law is. So if you're interested in the metaphysics um, and, you're, and you're actually in the coven, I did a series on our, on our group page. So you can feel free to check that out and let me know if you have any questions. But the short answer is we, that we don't really know um, scientifically, but we would expect it to be a means of, uh, of a higher planar energy, you know, just energy itself affecting you, uh, uh, basically a way of sensing uh, the energy around you without depending on your physical senses, kind of like a sixth sense, but um, it, it would be like you're feeling it in your soul. <laughs> that's, that's the only other way, that's the way to say it. But, but it's like it can manifest as physical feelings as well. There is a, uh, a back and forth between your body and your mind. And if your body's not healthy, your mind won't be. And if your mind's not healthy, your body won't be either. And that's something that a lot of people don't really understand is, is the importance of treating your body and mind as one system, one engine functioning together. Um, so, you know, that's what separates you from spirits and even deities is the fact that you are embodied. That's a big concept in Wicca is embodiment. We are embodied. We are in our physical forms. That gives us a different kind of power than deity. You know, it's different. And it's still, it's, it's powerful in its own way. And, and that is, you know, that is something that is significant in Wicca as well. If you look at this chart, we're going to talk about later um, what it means to have unbalanced chakras. But what you'll see is here you have the, um, one who's aligned is supposedly going to be giving off more energy and you can see how their chakras are right in the center and they're um, fully round and they're large and kind of emanating and then the, the person who's not aligned the chakras are off center and you get weird signals coming off of them um, so that would be what we're talking about when we say to align our chakras. 
So we're going to go through the main seven. Um, the root chakra, if you're standing, that is the base of your feet. If you're sitting, it is the base of your spine. Um, in Sanskrit, the name is Muladhara. Um, it represents your physical identity, your stability, your safety, your groundedness. All of your physical needs, like um, um, having a roof over your head, uh, having a bed to sleep in, getting enough sleep. Um, unbalance can cause anxiety and insecurity, shallowness, lack of physical energy, physical exhaustion, physical issues. You get it. Um, it's repaired by anaerobic exercise. It's like lifting weights, doing abs, sit-ups, push-ups. Um, that is how you can help the body, and then you can help the mind through self-acceptance and affirmations of strength and confidence. So, I am strong. You can do um, yoga where you stand in place and um, do like the tree pose, something that digs you into the earth, that makes you feel like a sturdy, solid object on the earth, you know. Um, these associations here, these things can help you if you meditate with them. Um, you can use the scents and oils to like get yourself into the right mindset. The crystals are, they, they produce energy of their own. We'll talk about crystals next week. Um, crystals uh, have like a certain structure and that structure causes the energy coming off of them to vibrate a certain way, which you can perceive, you can invoke. Um, so a lot of people do that. They work with crystals for evocation magic because it's like being able to invoke something for free because it's not a fairy or anything like that. It's just natural energy. It's like the energy of the earth. You know, it's like, it's kind of like elemental energy, but specifically of the earth, you know. Um, so crystals that are good for this chakra are black and red, um, black tourmaline, onyx, um, bloodstone is green, but it's a good one for this. It's, um, it, it's very like hardy and sturdy and represents like being confident. Um, it's uh, smoky quartz, garnet, ruby, hematite, you know, all the good stuff. So uh, I got all of these images from uh, a PDF I found at the chopperscentermeditation.com. I just think they're really good graphic representation of each of these. Um, the color here is red. Um, the, the foods that you could eat are all red-based foods, tomatoes, beets, you know, apples, pomegranates. Uh, the mantra here is like meant to be like if you're doing meditation. So like if you're going like, so you can do something like that. And it like helps you to, yeah. And so walking around outside barefoot is good for this one as well. Just like getting down deep into the earth, like going, taking a nap in the sand, that kind of thing. Uh, and the affirmation is, I am safe, protected, secure. All is as it should be. So that's pretty much the root chakra in a nutshell. That's like the chakra that anchors us to this plane of existence, to the earth, you know. So the sacral, the sacral chakra is the next one up, and that's like the genitals in, in the womb. Um, it represents your emotional identity, creativity, and desire, obviously, because the womb is the ultimate way of creating, creates new life. Uh, unbalance here causes depression and moodiness. Um, it causes creative blocks, intimacy issues, like sexual assault can damage the sh chakra. Um, it can cause like um, stubbornness. Um, it, it can even lead to addiction if it gets really bad. Um, but it's prepared by positive sexual experiences, cooking, gardening, things that involve creating, using your hands, like um, wholesome activities, and affirmations of self-love and positivity. Um, the associations are water, because it's nurturing and creative, right? Uh, the oils, are, you know, you can read here, but, you know, like lemon, aloe, things that are healing. Um, and crystals, amber, carnelian is a good one. I use carnelian. Um, the foods are all orange based, oranges, carrots, melons, mangoes, nuts, you know, just like stuff that is good for the mind and soul. Um, again, um, the mantra is bomb and the affirmation is I am beautiful, creative, and unique. The solar plexus chakra, uh, Manipura, that is ego, personal power, ambition, motivation, and confidence. So you have um, your root chakra 
um, and that one is like the anchor. Then you get to the next one above that, and you have the creative, the beginning, the, the cardinal energy. So, so you know that those two are very cardinal energy. When you get to the solar plexus chakra, you get into the fixed, um, just like very prominent energy. It's the energy source of the body. It's it's literally how you get energy to, to fuel your body. The element is fire. Um, my mouse just stopped working. Here we go. <laughs> the energy is fire. Um, unbalanced here can cause low self-esteem. Um, it can cause emotional exhaustion, impatience. Um, GI issues, um, you can get like fear of rejection, lack of willpower. So you find like when something's wrong with your stomach, like you're not digesting enough nutrients, you're tired a lot, you don't have a lot of energy, you can't put up with people, um, you just get kind of like really depressed, like not like depressed, like clinical depression, which is like sad and like I can't do it and you know, really like, um, it, it winds up in you being kind of like stuck in a rut, you know, and it's, it's repaired by aerobic exercise. So because I have a really delicate tummy, this is why I have to run like every day. I just, I can fall down into this trap so easily, so easily. So I run a lot. Um, you could fast is really good as well. Eating clean and nutritious foods. That's really important for your stomach and, um, affirmations of accomplishment. So that's why exercise is good as well. Cause it makes you feel like you're getting stuff done, even though you just like are basically wasting time and meditating and you just, it's like meditating. It's like, you just go out and you do it and you come back. It's like, even if you just run for 20 minutes, you just come back, just like, just feel good. You know, just after that, you could just lay down and you're just like, just like breathe. Um, the sense, you know, musk, motherwort, sandalwood, sandalwood's a good one, cinnamon, um, garlic, yeah, a lot of just like spicy, energetic kind of, uh, and citrine is a good one, I've used sulfur as well, um, I don't like sulfur as much, but calcite is good too, and, you know, different crystals work better for different people. Um, foods, bananas, lentils, white rice. This is like the brat diet encapsulated, right? So, um, if your stomach is hurting, that's why you eat bananas, rice, applesauce, toast. Falls right into the category here. Um, turmeric is really good for your stomach too. I love it. I can't eat ginger because I'm allergic, but obviously that's good for your stomach too. Um, the mantra is Ram. The affirmation is I accept myself and am positively empowered. I do enough and I am enough. You have to just remind yourself that you have limitations. And even though it's frustrating, it's important to just remember that you're not going to heal as long as you don't accept them. As long as you're trying to work through them, you're just going to keep, you know, it's like when you're stuck in a rut and you're like trying to rev the engine and it's just like your car just won't go. So if you just like can't do it, you just can't. You have to accept the fact that that is a limitation and just it's frustrating, but that's all there is to it. You have to just let it go and be yourself and take care of yourself. That's the important thing. Okay, so next we have the heart chakra. The colors are pink and green. Um, so you have red, orange, yellow, pink and green. Um, green is the original color. Pink is kind of like new age. Um, Anahata is the Sanskrit. It's social identity, love, relationships, respectfulness, and empathy. Pretty obvious. Uh, unbalance here causes obviously difficulty with relationships, uh, lack of compassion, so like narcissism, sociopathy, all of those issues really come from uh, imbalances in the heart chakra. Uh, paranoia as well, um, anger and grief um, will will cause issues here, um, heart conditions, respiratory issues. So you can see that as you get to the upper chakras, there's a lot more things that can go wrong. Um, this is why you don't do a lot of magic from your upper chakras, because if you exhaust one of them, then you could really do a lot of damage to your physical body. Uh, the upper chakras are more are less for actually doing magic on this plane of existence and more for channeling energy from higher planes down. So you don't do a lot of evocation from any of the higher chakras. The heart chakra is usually about the highest you'll go. Um, this is repaired by spending time alone, giving to charity. 
going out, um, doing something like dedicating your time, helping someone move, you know, uh, and affirmations of kindness. So this is our kindness chakra. You have to just kind of um, remember that other people have needs too and that you can help them just by listening to what their needs are and, um, you know, being there for them. The uh, elements here are fire and air. So we kind of break from the um, pattern that we were going in. There's seven, so obviously it wouldn't line up for each, you know, because there's only four elements. So when you get to the higher elements, you find that they kind of double up a little bit. This one is fire and air. Um, fire because, you know, it's the passion center, and air because there is an element of mystical uh, mysticism and um, emotion. The oils are lavender, um, primrose, the crystals are green ones, venturine, emerald. Peridot is a really good one. I really want to get a peridot crystal. That's on my that's on my list. <laughs> Maybe for all, I'll get one. Um, pink tourmaline, rose quartz. You know, pink stones too. Harlequin quartz is a good one too. I really like harlequin quartz. Not a lot of people use it, but it's pretty. Um, the foods are leafy greens, peas, zucchini, avocado, and broccoli. Also good for your stomach, though, broccoli. So that's, you know, so you can see how, like, sometimes it's, like, really a spectrum. And that's why some systems have, like, 50 chakras, because they have, like, one for each hand and, like, one for each organ. Like, you know, they go crazy, you know, whatever you want to do. Um, the mantra here is yam. And um, it's element air, um, air and fire. So, you know, go out on a nice summer day get some sun, fly a kite. That is what this element is about. Um, and the affirmation is, I love myself unconditionally. I give and receive love fully and effortlessly. So you want to tell yourself uh, and act in a way where you can truly be selfless and understand where people are coming from. And that is how you fix your heart chakra. The throat chakra, Visuddha, is self-expression, communication, integrity, and truth. Okay, that's the one that people don't expect. Like throat chakra, ah, obviously it's about talking and singing, but truth as well, because that is how you convey truth, is through speaking. Um, so unbalance here causes difficulty communicating, obviously. Uh, it also causes issues expressing yourself, obviously. Um, it can cause mood swings, indecision, and um, it can also cause you to lie. It could cause you to be inauthentic. And, and you can cause issues by being inauthentic. Um, you know, so there's, there's a very spiritual component to this chakra, you know, here because it's the first of the higher chakras. So you start to see the spirituality. Um, it's repaired by chanting, singing, writing, expressing yourself, telling the truth, um, being true to yourself as well, accepting yourself and affirmations of grace. So, um, think of this throat chakra is being like the king or queenly chakra. This is the, the royal chakra, okay, because that's what makes someone royal is a mastery over their ability to control and manipulate others. The associations here are spirit and air. So you still have the air because air is very mystical and, it, and air is singing and, and, and um, uh, sound and all that. But the spirit component is the truth, the, um, you know, the... Um, authenticity, all of that is a critical component of this throat chakra. The oils here are frankincense, chamomile, eucalyptus, clove, aspen. Um, you want blue crystals, lapis is really good, blue lace agate. Um, I have a sodalite crystal that I love. Sodalite, ah, it's so amazing. Sodalite is the best. Um, aquamarine, sapphire is good. I wear a sapphire ring, so... I'm really bad at communicating sometimes, so I always have to think about this. It's also my birthstone. Go figure. I'd be my birthstone, and I'm terrible at communicating. <laughs> okay, so um, the foods, blueberries, kelp, currants, dragon fruit, just like blue foods and exotic fruits, um, things that feel queenly or kingly, grapes are good for it, um, grapes and cheese platter. Um, you want to sit in an open space and relax, listen to music. If you sing, you could go out in the woods and just like, woo, belt it out, you know, like just sing. The mantra is hum, and the affirmation is, I express myself with grace and integrity. I communicate effectively with everyone I meet. The third eye chakra. Um, I don't, I'm, I'm not exactly sure the correct pronunciation of this one. I think it's ajna. I, I'm not sure. Um, the J, I think is pronounced differently in different 
parts of India even, so oh, I don't know. <laughs> but um, it represents self-reflection, intuition, clarity of sight, visualization, and imagination. So this is the divination center uh, of the body. Um, unbalance in this chakra uh, causes poor intuition. It causes a lack of concentration. It can impair your judgment and cause headaches and trouble sleeping. Um, it can result in confusion, memory loss, depression, uh, but it's not as common to cause depression as with the sacral chakra because depression is actually something with your physical body and less with your me your metaphysical body. Um, you know, the issue, when you have issues with your metaphysical body, that results more in like the symptoms of like ADD than depression. Um, but you also, um, yeah, so, so, uh, it also can cause nightmares and yeah, and oh, and I said trouble sleeping, so, um, you repair the chakra through meditation pr primarily, uh, getting more sleep, uh, affirmations of intuitive ability and wisdom. So trusting your intuition, learning how to just, um, you know, when you have a feeling, listen to it. So you're not constantly doing things like saying, oh God, I knew I shouldn't have gone this way. There's tons of traffic. I just, I had some thing in the back of my head that told me I should go a different way. And I just, I couldn't like, I just didn't listen. I should have listened. Like that is the kind of stuff that happens when you're not really aligning your third eye chakra. Um, the element is spirit, purely, but some people also think light is an element, and they associate it with light, so the uh, scents or oils are jasmine, mint, mugwort, that's like the death energy source of spirit, and kalia is like the life energy source, they're very similar, they work similarly, but one is like life energy, and one is death energy source, and you have hibiscus and alfalfa, the crystals, amethyst, purple, that's like the crystal for the chakra. Moonstone also works, indicolite, uh, lipidolite, I love, oh my god, it's so good. You just put it on your computer and it just like absorbs like the EM shit that comes out of your computer, like it just absorbs all the negativity that comes from just like sitting at a computer all day. It's the only way I survive a job in IT is lipidolite, it's amazing. Sodalite, again, can be used here, so that one has a lot of applications. So I do recommend getting a different crystal for every chakra, if you can. They're not that expensive, so maybe over time, or they sell sets online, so. Um, the foods here are blackberries, purple kale, cabbage, grapes, raisins, figs, um, you know, figs, figs. The mantra is sham. Um, the way to uh, recover here is to um, read a book or sit in a sun-filled room, just like um, get into a state of mind where you are relaxed and you are able to meditate or zone out or think about oneself, that kind of thing. The affirmation is that you trust your intuition, you follow its wisdom, and you understand the true meaning of life's situations. The final chakra is the crown chakra. Uh, this one is violet and white, um, silver. Um, Saswara, it means self-awareness, spirituality, connection to higher planes, and enlightenment. So this is like the chakra that hooks you up into the higher planes. If this chakra is not aligned, you'll find it very challenging to connect with deity. Um, unbalance here causes lack of inspiration, aimlessness, loneliness, feeling like you don't have a purpose. Um, that could cause you to get mixed up in materialism, like lack of spirituality. You could be like, well, life sucks. Everything is meaningless. You know, uh, you can have difficulty meditating. Um, you could feel like you're not yourself. Um, you can have physical or emotional exhaustion. It can even cause sensitivity to light and sound, poor sleep habits, and migraines if you like it bad enough. You repair this one purely through meditation, ritual, and affirmations of inner divinity. So the only way to really repair this chakra or keep it aligned is to maintain a connection to the divine, but that has different meanings for different people. So whatever the divine is to you, this chakra is about being in touch with that. Uh, the elements here are all of them, all of the elements or, or none of them, however you want to think about it. Um, the scents are myrrh, uh, dragon's blood, goat's kala, lotus. This is actually represented by like a super duper petaled lotus um, and the crystals I like I really like solacite that's what I work with um, solacite is good um, selenite obviously diamond is expensive but it's good too you know, clear quartz though you can even just use clear quartz that's why I said everyone needs a clear quartz crystal because it's like good for anything <laughs> you know 
Um, here, the uh, spirituality is the key focus. Um, you don't really nourish this with food. Um, instead, it's more like, you know, you could fast. You nourish it with meditation and prayer and self-reflection. Um, this one is just about meditating and chanting. This is Aum. Aum is the sound. Um, and the affirmation is to honor the divine within you and within all things. This is the only way to really come to terms with this chakra is just to find divinity, really. Um, okay, so those, that's an overview of all the chakras. I didn't go into the full um, breadth of detail. There's a lot more information about them. If you're interested, you should go and research it. Um, you should find a bunch of different resources. You know, like I said, different people have different interpretations and there's different numbers of chakras. So if you're really interested and you really like working with chakras and you want to dig deeper, um, definitely look for like different, you know, say you like Buddhism, like look in there, see what they think about chakras. Like if you like Hinduism, look in there, see what they like about chakras. Like there's different opinions in each one. There's a lot of different things you can do. And we're not even talking about um, crystal healing here. So that is another really big topic that has a lot of information as well. Like you use these specific chakras and crystals in specific ways to do healing. It's like Reiki. Um, I don't actually know that magic very well so that's why I can't really teach it so if you're interested that we could learn it together let me know um, so the kundalini is um, the name for the energy that's inside of you and the idea is that there's this serpent god resting in your root chakra and if you want the um, chakras to be aligned you have to uh, awaken her and, and help her move up through your chakras um, to the and when she reaches the crown that's when you know you're connected to a divine plane and your inner power is awakened for you to be able to use it. That's the analogy that they use to explain what it feels like to align your chakras. Um, there's also an analogy in Avatar The Last Airbender, and you can see I have screenshots from that show here. Um, in, in when Aang goes and learns how to harvest, you know, a, access the um, power of the Avatar, the pools are really like cruddy and, you know, blocked, and he has to like unblock them, and then the stream flows, and it's all clear, and, it, and it, the water's flowing, and now there's like greater capacity for life and using life energy. So the idea is in this case that your root chakra would be like the highest pool and you have to clear the root chakra and that allows water to flow into the next one and then you clear that and that allows water to flow into the next one and so forth until you have like, you know, a clear flowing stream all the way down. Um, and so yeah, so inner energy is more easily directed when the chakras align. That's the point of alignment. Okay, so um, here I want to do um, a really brief guided meditation to align the chakras. Um, it's going to be really brief. Like when you do this meditation on your own um, and as part of the homework, I suggest you do it again by yourself, like without me even talking because it's very simple and you don't even need me. Um, but the idea is to just like spend a lot of time on each stage, really considering the things that we've learned um, about each one. So, um, you know, letting, feeling confident with yourself, uh, you know, feeling all of the feelings that you have to like go go back through all of the notes here and and really like think about the things that you have to accept about yourself and about your your life and about the people in your life um and like that way when you're doing the chakra meditation on your own you can actually like you know go through the practice of taking taking some aspect of yourself and and embracing it and that that's how you really clear the way for the water to flow out of that chakra if you think about it in like the stream analogy. Um, and so, you know, that's something that you have to kind of do on your own when you're aligning your chakras, like in, in a quick moment, like that's when you use what I'm going to do here, which is just like, you know, visualizing balls of light, like kind of coming in, in together. But when you're actually trying to like permanently, like really truly deeply align your chakras, that's something that takes time. Um, you know, it's, it's, like, for example, like, you know, if you're not eating right for a long time, like that'll really mess up your stomach chakra. And then if you want to eat right and get healthy and get and, and fix that chakra, it's going to take you time to get back to a place where you're really truly able to use the energy from that part of your body. And, and, you know, you're not going to feel truly integrated as long as you're, you know, sitting around and not getting up exercise or not eating right. Like that is going to make it hard for you to even do any kind of magic because your body is a critical component. You know, you can't divorce your body from your soul. And that's why it's, you know, you have to focus on this kind of stuff. So, um, 
So for the guided meditation, what I want you to do is just, um, if you're sitting, that's fine. If you're standing, that's fine. Um, if you're standing shoulder width, with shoulder width apart for your feet, just nice and rela a relaxed posture. But I want you to kind of like stay, stay straight. You know, it's like if you roll your shoulders back. So roll your shoulders back, you know, bring your shoulder blades together, put your head up, but, but make sure you're relaxed too, okay? Your face should be relaxed, your arms relaxed. Just stand with your hands up like this, uh, or if you want, you can do this. Uh, some people like doing this, like the guy in the picture. Um, and just sit like that um, and sit up straight, uh, or stand if you have trouble sitting up straight for like five minutes, then just stand. Um, and here's and if you're standing the root chakra is like your feet and your whole legs and if you're sitting It's just the base of your spine Okay, so I want you to um, close your eyes Stand comfortably or sit comfortably just like I said and close your eyes. Just take a few deep breaths in And out A red orb, a disc, spinning. And as you focus on it, it spins faster and faster. It circles your whole legs up, up toward your waist. center on your body. Imagine another orb starts to, to glow just above that. You can feel positivity emanating. Disc spins faster too, getting brighter, forming a large orb. Your body might feel tingly and warm from the waist down, and you feel totally relaxed as you imagine the red and orange orb perfectly aligned and centered on your chakra. Above that, in the stomach, just below the ribs, you see another orb appears, a yellow light, spinning. And you feel confident, firm, and anchored as the lower three chakras come into alignment. The yellow orb spins faster and goes back as it centers. heart chakra appears, glowing above the yellow, swirling, rotating faster and faster. You feel a sense of peace and wonder and love as this chakra comes into alignment. The light of gratitude at the chest center. Spinning faster and faster, you feel a sense of genuineness, a love of self, your body feels warm and soft and light, like you're sleeping in a big feather bed, 
but firm and strong. chakra spins faster and brighter as you come next in the center of the body to the pelvis. Now it feels like the third eye chakra is aligning itself almost and it's, it's spinning faster and faster, bringing together the light from the rest of the chakras. a sense of emptiness there or fullness where time and space and your body is still existing in the same way that you perceive them to exist most of the time. Everything seems to blend together in one happy brightly as the purple chakra comes into alignment with the center of your body. And from there, once the chakras are fully aligned all the way up, the white light of the crown chakra glows brightly, fusing them all together and becomes unknown if the chakras are really one light, one chakra, or many. Your body and your soul united as one. Just take a few deep breaths in. And out. It makes it up straighter. This time, say um, try to tune with the world, the energy around you, breathe in. Oh. Deep breath and let the light fade. Open your eyes, shake your head, blink a few times. That is how you align your chakras through meditation. As I said, though, that is like the quick and dirty way of aligning them. The way to make sure that they're truly aligned all the time is to live in accordance with the needs of your physical and metaphysical self to understand the issues that you have with your different chakras and to account for them through healthy eating, good exercise, uh, good communication habits, um, good meditation habits, um, and giving to charity. Okay. So how do you improve your metaphysical health? Okay, now I've talked about why it's so important. So aligning your chakras, like we just said, is easier when your chakras are individually healthy. Um, the way to balance each chakra individually, you can use crystals and crystal meditation. Um, you can use different yoga poses, and I've included a link here to a website that breaks down what yoga poses are good for what chakras. And there's beginner moves all the way through advanced. Yoga is super duper good for your chakras. I love yoga. I love it. It's amazing. It's really good for your mind and your soul and your body. Um, and you have to embrace the different aspects of yourself. So you do that same meditation, but now at each stage in the meditation, ask yourself the question, okay, am I being confident? Am I being my, my most creative 
energetic self? Am I being, or am I loving myself? Am I loving others? You know, am I truly loving others or am I actually just loving myself? Ask these questions for each chakra, you know, in the meditation. Really come to know yourself and where you're struggling and what needs work. And that is the key to kind of improving your ability to evoke at a moment's notice, to always be in control and in tune with yourself so that every time you evoke or invoke energy, it's because you mean to and your intention is the result of the work. Chakra magic works best when you're your truest self, so you have to, um, you know, that's, that's like witch tip number five, be yourself, be authentic. If everything you do is authentic or genuine, people will value what you have to say. You don't have to be smart or funny or know a lot of things. You have to speak the truth and be aware of yourself. And people will like you and value what you have to say. And you will immediately find that your ability to contribute to society is increased bountifully. Um, and that is really the that is really the secret that comes out of you know working with your mind and body as one. So now I want to talk a little bit about how to use the chakras. So once they're aligned, so in that chakra meditation at the very end, I, I pointed out how now at this moment it doesn't you can't tell if your chakras are individual parts of you or if they're all one. You just feel like yourself. You just feel like you're one with your body. You're fully in touch with your physical form. And when that happens, you can do what's called bubble casting. You can kind of pull out one of the forms, of, one of the chakra energies and push it out of yourself so that that energy is what emanates outward. Um, normally you would do it with your root chakra or your sacral or stomach chakra to cast a circle. I like to cast circle with my root chakra. I just like red energy just bursts out of me, forms big red sphere around me. It's so easy. It's the easiest way to cast circle by far. Um, you can also do it with different chakras. I do most of my evocation magic for my heart chakra. So if I'm sending out a blessing, that's coming purely from my heart chakra. So, um, you know, that kind of bubble ca ca uh, casting is the term that might be specific to AAW, Aquarian Age Wicca. I don't know where the term bubble casting even comes from, but the technique is the same as one that's been practiced for many, 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 many years an age um, where you just like kind of take all of that energy uh, take the energy from one of your chakras and just kind of swirl it around your whole form and pulse it outward and that brings with it intent and you know so um, remember that each element contains some amount of the other elements within it um, so in that way you know your chakras as well contain the other chakras within it. So um, you want to allow the energy from one of the chakra centers to extend out of your body. Um, but what you're really doing is allowing all of them to in a specific way. So if I, um, you know, okay, okay, so here's an example. So, um, you know, the element or the, the astrological sign Virgo, Virgo is um, mutable earth. And it's in the same quadrant as fixed fire, Leo. So it is the earth of fire. Okay, it represents the earth that is found within fire. And what does that mean? It's like the ashes. The ashes that the phoenix is born from. The ashes that the new plants grow through. That bring nutrients and provide the ability for new life to spawn after, say, a volcanic eruption or something. So um, that is an example of the earth of fire. Does that make sense? So you have the elements in, in there. There's some amount of each element in all the, the other elements. Um, and each chakra is like that as well. There's really a part. They're really part of one system. So when they're all aligned, you know, when you go to bubble cast, it's not like the one chakra is doing it. It's like your whole body is now emanating energy, but it's from that chakra, but it's, but it's you. The energy is you. The energy is your chakras. It is you. It's like, it's just like a way of expanding your existence. Like I am greater than my embodied form. Right? It's, 
Does that make any sense? I hope that makes sense. I hope if people have questions, they'll go ahead and just leave a comment and I'll get to them or send me an email, covenantofmind.gmail.com. Um, so casting usually is from one of the lower chakras. Um, the three, the throat, third eye, and crown are called high resonance. It's harder to control the energy if you e evoke from there. Um, the three above, like I mentioned, those are really for invocation. They're really for accepting awareness of the divine, of higher planes. The third eye is specifically for seeing the awareness of, you know, the lack of, um, uh, of one distinct reality and timeline, you know, it's kind of like allows you to see through the cracks. Um, and, and the throat chakra is like what links that with the body chakra. So the throat chakra is kind of a body and a mind chakra. So some people do actually cast their throat chakra. It's very challenging. I don't, I, I use my heart chakra, which is still challenging. Most people would probably use their stomach or lower. Um, the heart chakra is, is good for casting though as well. And a lot of people do like to work with it. So I encourage people to give it a shot. <laughs> um, but so the lower four chakras are for evocation, really. They're, they're, they, they are not for invocation pretty much at all. You, it, it, does, it doesn't make sense for you to in, invoke something into your stomach. Like, what? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but I guess you could if you really want to. If you think of a working that, that would use that energy, then you should do it. Don't listen to me. <laughs> And leave a comment if you try it. Leave a comment saying what you did so that I can learn too. Okay, so um, you can also use chakras for healing. We're not really going to cover that here because it's really a lot of material and we're already close to an hour. Um, but in healing spells, often you'll use the color blue because blue represents water and healing and nurturing. But when you're using healing with chakras, you might use the color of the target chakra. So my stomach has been aching lately. So maybe I'll make a sigil and then I'll carve the sigil onto a yellow candle. And then I'll use the yellow candle to help my stomach feel better whenever it starts to hurt. That's an example. Um, candles are not necessary. You could um, you could just focus on the colors of it. You could use like you get rid of headaches by doing this, by allowing the mind to phase out. So like you just you can just sit there and align the chakras and then just like let yourself float in that space where we were. And then when you come out of it 10, 15 minutes later, it's like you took a nap and your headache's gone. And it's, it's amazing. You can really do a lot with chakras to heal your own heal your own body. Uh, okay, so that's pretty much it for this. If you're really interested in chakra healing, that's a totally separate topic. So um, let me know. We'll try to find a good book on it. I don't know enough about it myself to teach it. I would have to learn as well. So we could do a book study or something like that if people are actually interested in that. Um, but for the basics here, um, you know, you can heal with crystals as well. You could take a crystal and, like, say your throat hurts, you could put a blue crystal here and maybe just, like, sleep with it there or something like that, I think that, that could help as well. Or if you're going to give a big speech and you're nervous, you could bring a blue crystal with you and it, it'll help, it'll help you calm the nerves and stay calm and do a good job. Okay, so the homework for lecture three, um, there is significantly more homework this time around. Um, we may do two weeks again um, and do, the, the next lecture is not a lot of material, um, but the homework in, for the next few weeks is going to be getting a lot, um, more uh, in, in depth because we're actually going to start doing evocation. Um, we're going to do bubble casting this week and next week we're going to actually write some spells. Uh, so we're getting really close to like doing real witchcraft. Um, this week I want you to read chapters three through five of Wicca by Scott Cunningham uh, and Natural Magic, which you should already have. Chapters two through four, it's a lot of reading, but it's it's kind of light and fluffy. Chapters three through five, that's really preparing you for next week where we're going to talk about the tools. I want you to come um, to that lecture, you know, with some idea of what the tools are, and then I'll just kind of like cement that with examples and uh, of how you would use it and things like that. Uh, if anyone has any questions about any of the tools before next week's lecture, you can feel free to message me or email me and I'll make sure I cover it. Uh, this week I also need to do 30 minutes of chakra meditation, like the one we just did. Spend 10 minutes, do it three times, try it in the, in the bath or a shower. I love doing that same meditation in the shower. Oh my God, it's amazing. Um, align them when you, uh, you know, stand up straighter and stretch, um, do some yoga, um, re release tension in the spine. Just take the time to like find out what chakra is hard to align and spend some time working on that particular chakra. Just get a feel for it. You're not going to fix any issues you have with your chakras in two weeks, but you can understand what you need to work on and what your next steps are. And this is why this can sometimes take a year and a day, because maybe you'll learn all of this material that's in this course and you still won't be able to master this stuff right away. 
maybe it comes very naturally to you and you're ready to um, initiate immediately once this course is over. So our year in a day is just how long you need to figure this stuff out. And if you're having any kind of trouble, feel free to come reach out to me and I'll give you some help. Um, I also want you to do beginner's bubble casting. So it's basically the challenge is you're gonna cast circle without moving. Just gonna sit, align your chakras, and then pop one, pop, choose the energy from one and, and use probably from your stomach and use that to fuel the circle and just pop it out and fill the whole room around you. Make sure you're in control of that energy the whole time. And then, uh, and you can move it around and, and swirl it and do whatever you want with it. And then finally, you should be able to pull it back in. You should have that level of control over bubble casting. If you have that level of control, going into Evocation Academy in week five. So next week, we're covering tools as a break. So you can keep working on this, you know, for two weeks, really. Um, but then we're going to be going into Evocation Academy. We're going to be actually writing spells, doing real magic. And you will have to be able to control your energy like this when we get there. So... That's the big stepping stone uh, for this. We just previously did dedication. This is the next big stepping stone is mastering what we call bubble casting. Okay, guys, let me know if you have any questions. And I'll see you next week. Blessed be.